All right, now who are the worst hip hop artists? Let's get into this. Now, first of all, we know for a fact that Vanilla Ice acted as a sellout because he basically went out there. He may have had a half decent flow in some of his songs. Now, some. Even if he had a good flow, he'd still be the worst because he doesn't have lyrical ability to back anything up. And, you know, we know that an artist could take a very good beat and they just destroy it. And you realize, I'd rather hear the instrumental. And so Silk the Shocker, Master P, you know, a lot of these artists are very forgettable. Then we look at like Creeshawn. And now Creeshawn is absolutely an annoying idiot. Like she is absolutely beyond annoying to listen to. She has the most annoying music you can't take seriously. And so that's one thing about it. But Vanilla Ice, let's get back to this idiot. Like this dude looks like a male escort with his flamboyant clothing. And he combs his hair back like a serial killer, wears these stupid shade sunglasses and when it's a dark room in the first place. He puts on all these flamboyant outfits just as MC Hammer. Now the difference is Vanilla Ice as the opposite situation from MC Hammer. MC Hammer had decent production and beats, but then he turned around and forced a flow. On the other hand, M Vanilla Ice stole a song from David Bowie, but then he turned around and started trying to act like a gangster and trying to force this image on himself that just didn't work because he didn't have the music to back up. Now, street cred-wise, if he could make multis and actually compete against people, he might have done okay. But Vanilla Ice copied. He tried to force his style, and he tried to copy other people. And so Cypress Hill are influential hip-hop artists that have this very good bass to their music. And Vanilla Ice tries to chant and make this hardcore gangster style along with MC Hammer. They both try and do it. And you got to remember that MC Hammer forces his flow. He really tries to shout and tries to talk loud, and it's just not rhythmic. And so that's really one thing here. And then we look at Silk the Shocker. Silk the Shocker has nothing. He has absolutely no flows to it. He tries to act fast. And he tries to rap fast, and he still can't do it. And so the worst rappers are not even one-hit wonders. They have just, you know, you could only make good music with them if you had a, somebody collaborating, making most of the lines. Because if they even have their voice on it for a second, they ruin it. And you get a good beat, and a crappy rapper destroys it. And then you have a crappy beat, and a great rapper makes it a classic, no matter what. And so we get into the Terror Squad here. And the Terror Squad has Big L is the best. Then Big Pun is second best. And then the third, basically not even close to either one, is Fat Joe. And Fat Joe focuses on women in his music videos for sex appeal because he knows he can't sell anything and he has no talent really. So Fat Joe goes out there and gets heavy beats and all this stuff and focuses on, you know, producing and marketing his music. So that's one thing about this. Then we get into, you know, the St. Lunatics and D12. And these people are a joke. You know, they don't have any lyrical ability. They talk about the same stuff all the time. They basically almost sound like somebody made their music for them. And that's the concern that you get with artists. Because you will see some of these artists that are just absolutely a joke. And they're absolutely beyond horrible. To the point that, you know, you don't even know what they're doing with a record deal. Like Nemesis. Oh my God, that group is horrible and nemesis is like the worst rap group in the world and you know you start to see a lot of the southern rappers that have heavy bass because they have no lyrical ability so they just chant all this dirty shit nobody wants to hear dudes talking about their you know what every other sentence it's like disgusting sausage fest shit and it's like the masculinity hip-hop movie where you see the worst rappers talking about hose this, hose that, because they don't know what they're doing. And it's like Vanilla Ice is just like this, where he goes out there trying so hard to put on the gangster image. Why don't you just make multis? Why don't you just say what's in your mind? Why don't you just make one song after another? No, no, no. He wants to go out there and act like a gangster. He wants to invent his street cred acting like he's tough to make music. And there's a million people that follow that kind of trend, and they become forgotten. And so Silk the Shocker, now he is a beat desecrator. Like, I will listen to his instrumentals, because he has good connections with a good producer. Or not good producer, but at least reasonable beats. Not a good producer, because Master P still sucks with his music, even with a heavy bass. You would not want to blast him out of your car, because he would just destroy it. So this is where, you know, the worst rappers, Little John the Eastside Boys, like these dudes are boring when it comes to lyrical ability, but they do have good beats to get the start party started. But then the problem we have with 
Little John. The East Side Boys is, you know, the influence they have doesn't necessarily bring good music because we know Eminem influenced multis and a lot of this stuff in music. You know, Notorious B.I.G. brought the East Coast on the map. Tupac Shakur was, you know, pioneering the vision part of music. And, you know, Nas is very deep and philosophical, while Jay-Z puts words together ingeniously. But then we have artists that are just absolutely forgettable to the point I don't even know their name until I actually hear their music and then I want to switch songs immediately. And they fill up albums, and they make a lot of filler albums. And we know, you know, DMX did a good job with a lot of his music. But then, you know, when people start collaborating, that's when you start to see problems. Is, I'm going to say right now DMX is an above average rapper. But then when you start to get some of these people on these record labels beneath them, you start to get people that fall. And when people can't flow and they can't rap, like you see Creeshawn. And Creeshawn cannot rap to save her life. And so she chants and she collaborates and she tries to just be stuff she's not. You know, she just doesn't have anything. And so she makes these music videos. You obviously figure somebody must have been paid a lot of money to be in that video because you wouldn't want to be in that shit. Like, seriously, what is she talking about? And, you know, this is where Vanilla Ice is just like her. She is just a failure of music. And I don't even think she's making music anymore. So, you know, it's just an example. And you see where Cool Mo D goes against Busy B. Now, Busy B is a forgettable one-hit wonder, and Cool Mo D becomes the influential father of battle rap. So you kind of see where the best rappers are and the worst ones, because we know lyricists beat rappers any time, any day in a battle. Now, on the other hand, you know, the legends will beat the lyricists. Like, you remember when, you know, Juice went up against Eminem. Eminem was a lyricist compared to the rappers, but then Eminem became the rapper compared to Juice because Juice went up against Eminem and it wasn't even close. So we start to see a hierarchy here. And as we go down on the list, we start to see people that don't even deserve to have their name mentioned because they're bullshitters. And it's like Chingy. Like, Chingy has good production and has some decent songs, but he's a forgettable idiot when it comes to music. And then, you know, this is where, like, Nelly's St. Lunatics. Now, you'd have to be loony to actually listen to their music. Like, seriously, I wouldn't even buy an album or even click on it. Like, to me, that is not even music I enjoy listening to or care about. Like, to me, St. Lunatics does not have hits unless you collaborate with somebody or get Nelly to really get in there. And even then, it still sucks. So, you know, this is my video on the worst rappers. And, you know, these are people basically with no multis, no complexity. They have the same monotonous flow in all their music or even the whole album. Or they can't even rap their whole career. And even after their career, even throughout the career, you finally get some kind of music that is attempted. And they still can't rap at the end. Even throughout the album, they have never been able to go with the beat or even know how to rap in the first place. But they've gotten somebody to write their music and try. So, you know, they get the A-plus for effort until they actually are heard. And then you see that you got to be a little generous here to listen to this music because you want to just turn it off.